Hi everybody, Professor O here. Today's tutorial is on the anatomy of a syringe and the anatomy of a needle. Sometimes it can be very confusing when you go into the med room and you have to decide what syringe I'm supposed to use or what needle I'm supposed to use in order to draw my medication. So I just wanted to go over that quickly to help you guys understand it a little bit better. When I say anatomy of a syringe, I really mean three parts. Um, it's pretty simple. We have the tip of the syringe, the barrel of the syringe, which has the unit of measurements on it, and the plunger of the syringe, which pulls the medication into the barrel and pushes the medication out of the barrel into the patient. So when you're choosing a syringe, um, you need to decide how much medication you have to draw up, and that will determine what um, size syringe you might wanna choose from. There are multiple sizes. This is a size 10 ml or milliliter syringe. I also have here a five milliliter syringe a three milliliter syringe and a one milliliter syringe. The one milliliter syringe actually um, draws up a volume uh, anything less than one ml. So if you have a very small amount to draw up, let's say a decimal point worth, um, this syringe, the one ml syringe, also known as the tuberculin syringe, is the syringe of choice for anything that might be a smaller volume. Uh, it could be a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, again, anything that's less than one ml, you wanna go ahead and get your one ml or your tuberculin syringe. However, if you are drawing up, let's say insulin, then there's no other choice for you but to use an insulin syringe. So um, insulin syringes tend to always be orange wherever you're working. You'll see it has an orange cap. It has orange writing on the, on the paper, on the packaging. And also the difference between an insulin syringe and the regular syringes that we have are the unit of measurements. So instead of being measured in mLs, insulin syringes are measured in units because we draw up insulin in units. And I'll go into that in a little bit more of a detail on actually drawing up and mi mixing different types of insulin. So I just wanted you guys to get very familiar and comfortable with the actual syringes, the different types, the different sizes, uh, based on the volume of medication you're drawing up. And also, of course, if you're using insulin, obviously you would use an insulin syringe and not a regular ML syringe. Now, the other thing I wanted to go over quickly was um, needle choice. This can be really confusing because we have lots of different needle sizes. Um, but again, I wanna go over quickly the anatomy of the needle. So whatever needle you pick out for any type of injection or drawing up that you're gonna use. The needle I have right here is called a blunt needle. This is a needle we use to draw up our medication with. But all needles are the same. When you take the cap off the needle, you'll see that you have um, the hub of the needle. This is the area that screws onto the syringe. You have the shaft of the needle, the long part of the needle where the medication flows through. And then at the very end of the needle, you'll notice that it is angled um, in a certain uh, direction. And that angling, that area of the needle that's angled is called the bevel. And so when we are looking at our needles, we wanna make sure that we notice which way the direction of the bevel is. Because for some of our injections, it's important that that bevel is in an upright position, especially if you think about giving an intradermal injection right under the skin. Um, those are our PPD injections. Or maybe if we're putting an IV into a patient and we wanna put the, um, uh, the angiocatheter into the vein, we wanna make sure that the bevel of that catheter is facing upright. So when you hear those terms on a needle, again, we have the hub, the shaft, and the bevel. That's just the anatomy of the needle. The other thing you need to know about choosing a needle is what size needle um, you're choosing and what length needle. So, and that all depends on what kind of injection you may be given. So if you are going to be giving a subcutaneous injection, you wanna use a needle that has a higher gauge. The higher the gauge of the needle, the smaller the needle. The lower the gauge number on the needle, the bigger the diameter of the needle. And then you also wanna note the length of the needle. A shorter needle is some kind of needle that we are going to be using for subcutaneous injections. A longer needle is a needle that we would be using for intramuscular injection. Again, based on the population that we're injecting, whether it's pediatrics or adult, we're going to make those adjustments. So how I find that information is on my needle packet itself. So when you guys go into the med room, you'll see a lot of different boxes of needles. It can be pretty confusing. So you need to actually read either the outside of the box or you're gonna to need to actually take the needle itself and read what it says on the packaging. So every single needle will tell you what size it is. So this size in front of me is a 25 gauge needle. So 25 gauge, that's a larger number, so that means it's a smaller diameter size needle. 
And then I'm looking at the length of the needle. This is five eighths of an inch. That's a pretty short needle. This would be a needle that I would use for a subcutaneous injection. I don't need to be going that deep into the patient. I wanna pick a nice small needle to get into that subcutaneous area. Now, if I wanna go into a muscle, I'm going to need a longer needle, okay? And maybe a little bit of a, um, larger or smaller gauge in terms of you know a larger diameter so i have a couple of different needles in front of me that are all considered intramuscular and they're all a little bit different so i just wanted to show you the difference um, in terms of size and that may be dependent on how big the muscle of the patient is so if i am going into maybe somebody's deltoid muscle i may use a shorter needle like a one inch needle and this intramuscular needle says it's a 22 gauge all right, one inch needles. So I can use that in the muscle, probably more likely in the deltoid because it's a bit of a shorter needle. Now, if I wanna go into a deeper muscle, let's say the ventral gluteal muscle, I may go ahead and pick a longer needle because I have a longer place, um, a longer uh, space to get into, right into that ventral gluteal muscle. So this needle is a 22 gauge. So the same gauge as the one inch, except this needle is one and a half inches long. And the other needle I have here, which is also an intramuscular needle, again, a little bit of a, um, larger diameter. It's a 21 gauge needle, and this is a one and a half inch needle. Now, why would I choose a needle that has a um, smaller gauge, larger diameter? Well, it also could be um, the viscosity of the medication I'm giving. So certain biologics may be quite thick, and if the medication's very thick, I may need a smaller gauged needle, um, but still keeping the same length for the muscle that I'm going into. Alrighty, so that was just a quick tutorial for you guys on needles and syringes. Hopefully that helps to make it a little less confusing when you go into the med room and you have to make these decisions. Um, remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I hope to see you around soon again at Professor O. What do you know?